the mutual rights. The mutual rights are about 70 or 80 percent. Both men, husband and wife have this towards each other. The first one, good treatment to each other and intimacy. So according to each, uh, each other's needs, physically, verbally, emotionally, mentally and sexually. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, live with your wives in a good and fair manner and wives live with them in a good and fair manner. Number two, uh, Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told us to be, be, be tender and gentle with our wives and the wife to also uh, think of her husband's, uh, as I said before, his efforts and so on and to thank him for it. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam <coughs> used to share with his wife how she eats. So for example, she said, one day I was eating a bone, a, 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 a bit of meat on a bone. I was eating it from one side. Then the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam took it from me and he ate from exactly the place that I was eating deliberately to show that he loves her and how tender. Uh, even when his wife was menstruating, he still was intimate with her in other ways to show her she is not dirty. She's not impure. And uh, he used to race with her and uh, Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once uh, a plate of food entered, I think I said it before, and it broke and he was tender with him. The plate of food broke on the floor. So one of his wives brought in, she sent with her servant, a plate of food to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when he was with his other wife. And Anas, the young man, he was sitting there and he says, the Prophet ﷺ's wife, mother of the believers, she got jealous. So she hit the servant's hand and the plate of food fell on the ground, the plate broke. And the food went on the floor. And uh, Rasul ﷺ comes up, he's a bit embarrassed in front of the guests and what she did. But he said nothing to Aisha. He leaned down, he picked up the broken glass of the or whatever it is of the plate put the food in another plate and then he said to Anas radiallahu anhu inna ummakum taghar your mother she gets jealous a lot that's it and he was smiling he took the actually he wasn't smiling he wanted her to learn he took a a, 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 a good plate from her house and sent it back to his other wife and that was over and done with he didn't make a drama out of it this could have been world war three but Rasul Sallallahu he reduced it. You can make pebbles out of mountains or mountains out of pebbles. Number two, being safe around each other. The husband and wife must feel safe around each other to communicate physically, emotionally, mentally, intimately. They must safeguard each other's dignity and honor. Your dignity and your honor, you must safeguard it. Uh, respect personal property. It is not permitted for a husband or a wife to spy on each other's personal devices without permission, unless in the beginning you have a mutual agreement. And obviously the more transparency there is, the better. But in general, you don't. Number, unless, unless a husband has a well-founded reason to suspect his wife of some kind of betrayal, or of a perceived harm after he saw signs that's going to come to his family or his wife. He can spy to protect the family. Can the wife do that? Yes. But the condition is under very strict measures. When truly and honestly you have rationally seen signs that are a danger to your family or betrayal. And even then I say, don't go to the devices because a person can hide stuff, can use another phone. So it's not really wise. What's the alternative? Talk. Tell her, tell him, I suspect this, this is what I'm seeing. At the end, maybe things will change. Or maybe inshallah, if you're just doubting wrong, it'll go away. But never spy because you have paranoia. There's a difference. Husband having paranoia about his wife, wife having paranoia about husband. This is suspicion of, of haram, you know. Allah says, Avoid much suspicion. Suspicion, irrational suspicion is a sin. Number 
Three, to maintain their family ties. A husband and wife, when they get married, the husband is not allowed to put a rule. She's no longer allowed to see her family. They're not allowed to come to his house. A wife cannot put and restrict his freedom to see his family and to cut off ties. And if, they, if he orders her that way, she has a right to disobey him. And there is no sin upon him because this is haram. And they have a right to their friends. A husband, because he got married, doesn't lose his friends. A wife gets married, doesn't lose her friends. <laughs> Can you imagine that? And we mentioned last week that Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he honored the friends of Khadija radiallahu anha. Khadija radiallahu anha had passed away. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam was seen by Aisha radiallahu anha, talking to an elderly woman and smiling. He was enjoying his time. She was over 70. She said to him, العجوز, ya Allah. Who is that old woman emphasizing she's old? Ya Rasulullah. A messenger of Allah. He says, ah, oh, she's just a friend of Khadija's. Anha. She says, I never got jealous of any woman except Khadija even after her death. And then, I, and then he said, we were remembering the good old days. That made it even worse. Aisha radiallahu says, Alam Allahu khayran minha. Did, But didn't Allah give you someone better than her, like me? And the Prophet said, no, wallahi. She supported me when everyone else left me. She believed me when everyone said I was a liar. She gave me her home when I was homeless. And Allah gave me children of her. No, wallahi, lam yubdila. Allah did not give me a better wife. And she said, from that day, I never said a single word about Khadija radiallahu anha.